Now, uh, we now have an opportunity to follow up on a comment that Trevor made about the importance of uh, unit committees. I found as a scoutmaster that it was extremely important for me to have a unit committee uh, that would help and support so that I'm not alone. And so uh, we'll now turn the time over to Matt and Rachel uh, McKiff to talk about unit committees. Matt and Rachel. Okay, well, thank you for giving us this time. I love that, Trevor, his, his segue was perfect. And uh, I love the parable of the tents by Amy. I think that was great, holding up that tent by herself. And like Charles just said, I think there are many on this, on this program that can relate to being a unit leader, feeling like you're holding up the tent by yourself. And it's, it's hard. <laughs> it is hard. I remember when I was first called as a, a cub master, I experienced so much of wanting to get it right and do it all, but not knowing fully the organization of a unit. And once I learned the organization and understood all the parts that every player has, I, I recognized I was doing the job of four people. And I've started to feel overwhelmed and I started to feel tired and realizing that what needed to take 10 hours a week or, you know, the, the week of PAC meeting was taking me a lot longer and it was burning out. Yes, many Scoutmasters have felt the same way. When you're a Deacon's Quorum Advisor, member of the Young Men's Presidency and Scoutmaster, you have an assistant, but the two of you are, are also the chaplain, the advancement, equi advancement equipment coordinator, outdoor oh, right. coordinator, and a religious emblem coordinator, and everything. And so uh, we want to talk about scout committees, as what has already been introduced. And two words come to mind, this, the essential and the effective unit committee. Unit committees are essential uh, for success. And we want to make them more effective. Um, to do that, though, uh, it, it warrants a brief review of uh, committees. And as mentioned earlier, the key three, if you're contemplating starting a new unit or strengthening your committee and are not familiar with these terms, briefly, the key three are the Chartered Organization Representative, which you need a sponsor. You can't have a unit without a sponsor. The committee chairman and the unit leader, whether it be a scoutmaster, cubmaster, or a coach. Uh, the unit leader is the direct to youth leader. It is the teacher, if you will. Uh, whereas the, the committee chair or the committee is the support. And it's really important to have enough support so that your unit can function effectively and have a uh, good program. Now, if you're starting a new committee, the committee chairman obviously is um, the leader, you need at least two other committee members. So to start a, a unit, I think you need at least five people to charter. And the, cha the, the committee needs to have a chairman, a secretary, and a treasurer. These are essential roles to, to, to have a committee function. You need to have communication, uh, and uh, record keeping, you need to have money and a way to uh, administer funds securely and safely. So these are essential roles. Now, uh, we're referencing uh, our handout packet, page number 14, which is a brief summary of committees. It also has uh, resources such as the committee guide, the troop committee guidebook, which looks like that. These are resources that have detailed explanations about these roles and positions, which we will not spend a lot of time in today, but try to uh, cover some of the highlights. We would like to focus on tips, tricks, and what I call pearls regarding an effective scout committee. Um, so first, what about involving parents? Right. So last, last summer at Philmont, a new position was introduced by our current commissioner called the new member coordinator. And that person does um, 
you know, creates a warm welcome and provides information, orientation, and introduction to the language of scouting, which we know can be a foreign, foreign language to people who are not familiar. Merit badges, requirements. To someone who doesn't know, they don't know. And we walk them through that. As Amy and Net Nettie have mentioned, having conversations one at a time, face to face. Those are, those are really key uh, points of communicating and having connected associations with people. But I think it's, it's important to, to emphasize the warmth that comes from doing face-to-face -face and a personal contact, helping people become oriented. Another thing I learned as being a young scoutmaster uh, and going to committee meetings, I realized uh, when I did my training that the scoutmaster is actually not a voting member of the committee. Hmm. The scoutmaster or the unit leaders are the direct to youth leaders. The committee is meant to support and strengthen the activities and the, and the details of running the unit. Um, moving on to other committee members, recruiting committee members. And this has been touched on a little bit already. How do you recruit and strengthen committee members? Sometimes these roles or titles, if you will, of a committee are intimidating to new parents or people you invite to be part of a committee. Uh, sometimes it's much easier if you're asking a parent or someone to be involved to just give them a single responsibility, one job or one role. Uh, Nettie mentioned this earlier, that they can be in charge of something once per year or right. uh, twice per a year rather yeah. than... Provide rides to day camp to handle invitations to the blue and gold or such like that. But parent involvement is, is key to the committee functioning. The parents are there for the sake of their kids and are committed to their kids' experience. And involving them by keeping it simple is a great way. But it just creates a smooth experience when responsibilities are shared. We don't want to be that committee of one. That that's what we call that, that burned out, <laughs> tired leader that says, you know, I'm tired. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> this is a lot. I remember the commercials. We don't want that feeling. The commercials for the army being an army of one. We don't want you to be a unit or a committee of one. As responsibilities are shared and divided, they become simpler and more uh, doable. So as you invite people to be part of a committee or to take on certain roles or responsibilities in the committee, um, expecting too much of them early uh, might be intimidating. So it's the responsibility of our trained leaders to gauge uh, the commitment and the skill set or um, abilities of each people you invite and try to match them with the responsibilities that we can delegate. Knowing that as the troop advances or the uh, unit progresses, that training can be added and their responsibilities can grow. To make an analogy to our youth, we don't expect the young scouts to be uh, leaders right away. They need to be taught and trained and uh, over time will develop into those leaders. Right. The same is true for adult volunteers. Yeah, incremental growth. When with brand new Cub Scouts, I handed the flag ceremony typed up and laminated and in a way that they could just slip it in their pocket. And those boys would pull it out and read until it was memorized. And by the time they were Weeblo Scouts, I was proud that they had it memorized, that they'd had the practice and that I could successfully send them on to the 11 year old and scouting experience with confidence and memorization in place incrementally growing in their confidence exactly same with parents as well um, and as we do this one important technique is follow through would you talk about that right follow through um, Nettie mentioned this in her her point as well that how important it is to connect with 
follow through. Um, when we follow up with a task given to someone, um, we, we help them to, to complete their assignment. When we don't follow up with people, sometimes it doesn't give them the encouragement to follow through. As a therapist, I, I learned early on that giving people homework to do on a weekly basis meant nothing to them if I didn't ask the next week what they learned from it or what they were doing, um, what their experience was like. And it's the same with, with parents. It's the same with youth. When we ask them to do something, give them a challenge, we give them an opportunity to grow or, we, or to succeed or shine. Following up with them creates um, impressive follow through. Follow, follow up increases follow through. That's right. It's, That's going to be one of our models. It's models. kind of the banter or the motto that we have in, you know, success in motherhood as well. Kids, did you do what I asked? And they put that face on. I'll be right back, you know. <laughs> and then the next time I come back and got it, mom recovered. It's it's all part of life experience. <laughs> I only wish that we could get more feedback from all of you because I know that many of you have had experiences in committees and knowing how to make them more effective. But I do want to reemphasize the, the importance of this, that a committee is essential and when they are effective, the unit can function as we hope. We want the unit leaders to be able to change the lives of the youth. And to do that and run the program as it should be run, they need support. That's right. Finally, one more thing that we can do. We feel it's so important to recognize our leaders, to recognize their efforts, to recognize their good intentions and their, and their good commitment to our, our units. And a simple thank you with a card or a cupcake or recommending them for scouting awards, uh, such as the Knots or um, the Scouters Key. When we, when we offer acknowledgement at, with a genuine thank you, it really means a lot. And it offers a lot of time, a drop in the bucket to continue when people offer that. And we have every opportunity or we have every reason to to feel grateful to the people who are guiding our children and we when we reinforce when we recognize that we reinforce that if you're not familiar with some of the awards that are worn here as the knots and you're on a committee or a chairman familiarize yourself with them because that can be an effective tool to help motivate and encourage uh, volunteer leaders well, thank you very much for listening. We've reserved the last bit of our time for questions or comments. And I don't know if Amy Hutchinson, are you still monitoring some of these questions for us or? Do we want to open it to our whole group to connect with any questions regarding a new unit or effective tricks and pearls they've had in their own scouting experience? All right. So I have just a couple questions in the in the feed of um, you know the the charter partner responsibilities. So that might tie in nicely, Matt and Rachel, with with uh, you know your committee and and those type of things. The charter partner or charter organization representative responsibilities. Yes. yes. Again, many of us have been in units where they are virtually absent. <laughs> or in other instances where they are very engaged and involved and. Uh, again, not to go into details because there is a whole book on what it means to be a chartered organ organization representative, but simply put, they have an extreme influence, be both being uh, a sponsor and a member of the committee, in fact, the owner of the committee, as well as being involved in their, their, their chartered organization. So they have a lot of weight and a lot of influence. And it, Use it, utilizing that in your committee for any resources, training, or also with direct to youth involvement. They can be uh, uh, very useful in teaching or being a figurehead or an example for the youth. I don't know if that answered the right. question directly. Yeah. But. 
Absolutely. About and quarterly, I, sorry, Amy, about a quarter or so, I, I invited our uh, chartered organization representative to speak at PAC meetings and to, you know, take, take a moment like a scout man or a cub master minute, just really mm -hmm. to continue, you know, to keep the uh, influence or to keep, you know, that person's um, association with the pack known to to parents and the boys to help them connected or that connection. Well, absolutely wonderful. And yes, we we uh, and I'll share in the comment to um, to the to the um, folks that asked that question. Um, you know, the charter partner. Uh, there's an agreement, and there's lots of steps that they are agreeing to take um, to support that unit, and that support is important. Um, the successful units typically have a, a very engaged chartered partner, and that's a definitely an important part. Um, I also, too, want to give a, someone had asked about our neckerchiefs. They noticed a lot of us are wearing the neckerchief loosely around our neck. This is a friendship knot. It's an international way to uh, tie your, yep, so a lot of us here on the call have the friendship knot. So, so um, and Amy, it. maybe it's important for them to all know that you can't tie your own friendship knot. Right. Right. And and when you get uh, a uh, uh, a neckerchief from the Vanguard Scouting Association, it will come tied with a friendship knot by a member of the board of of Vanguard. In fact, so. Charles taught our twelve year old to tie, and he tied this for Matt yesterday, Aww. remembering how to do that. And Matt remembered that he couldn't do that himself and called our 12-year-old. It, it, it was easier to teach the 12-year-old to do it. Because <laughs> he remembered a year later. <laughs> you, yeah. know, you know, Amy, when uh, there's a comment here, it says, don't worry so much uh, if you're going to do everything correctly. And, That's right. And, uh, you know, it's really interesting. I loved what you said, but one of my best clips that we have in one of these little mix play things on our counter is a, a video of our grandson, and he's leading as a Cub Scout his very first uh, flag ceremony. And he's up there holding the mic with his left hand, or with his right hand, and saluting with his left hand. <laughs> wrong, wrong hand salute, but he's doing it, and he did a great <laughs> job, had everything uh, memorized and everything. So it's important that, that we understand that we're building boys and yeah. girls, and that's what we're doing. We're building men and women. So right. good point, thank you. Well, and everything is a process in our life. And I apply the, scout, the, boy scout, or the Cub Scout motto to nearly everything I do, or you know, the interaction I have with our children, with friends, with, you know, in a therapy setting. Honestly, we do our best. We keep trying, we do our best, and we're all, in the process of learning and doing better. Exactly right. President Hinckley even used to say that that extraordinary things are normally done by ordinary people working in extraordinary ways and and, uh, and doing our best. And that's uh, that's all we can do. So. Right. 